<laughs> Julie Abel. Good morning. Now a uh, retired, a former teacher in Berkeley County, Julie. Yes, I am. Yeah. So when did you make your decision? Um, well, I've been make, kind of making the decision for a while, I think, but um, I officially uh, resigned on June 30th, and then, then it was board approved on July 10th. Was this a, and if you, this is the first time you're listening, Julie uh, has been our teacher correspondent on the program for about five years now, and I think that kind of came about uh, right around the time Governor Justice took over and they were discussing raises, and then the strike took place. And then Julie sent me an email that I read on the air, and the next thing you know, here she is, right, five years later. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, the, you're a person who was a career teacher. Yes. You did it your entire life, and now you're not. Mixed emotions, mixed feelings? Um, I mean, I'm excited, really, just to, to figure out what I want to do next and uh, look at what um, life has given me in terms of experience and just trying some new avenues and uh, using my skills in, in other environments and seeing how they translate. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what's next. It's, it's, it's exciting. 26 years in, in one direction, and, and now it's, it's time to find a new path. So <laughs> Were there many teachers who decided this past spring that this would be their last year teaching in Berkeley County? I mean, there's a lot of resignation, resignations and, and also retirements and then I mean, it's really hard to even tell. There's just so many board actions each time we have um, personnel actions to approve. So I'm not sure where, how things are going to shake out in terms of um, staffing. It's it's not great, I can tell you that. But um, I have seen quite a few more, I guess, what people are surprised about is the 20-year teachers. And that's where I'm at. You know, I had 22 years in Berkeley County. Um, and so, like, we, I, I'm starting to see more of my friends or peers who are in their, their 20 years or 20, but short of 30. You know, we're short of 30 years and we're not retiring. We're, we're resigning. So um, we're not going to stick it out. We're not going to wait till we get to, for me, it would be the magic number of 30 or 55. So I'm not going to do that. So I've decided I'm, I'm ready to just take some action now and uh, see what awaits me because I don't want to wait out four more years. Four years is a long time. And um, I'm ready to just try something new. And if those opportunities weren't available to me within Berkeley County, then it's time for me to just try somewhere else. I, I got a question about something you said. Then the board approved. What are you guys like indentured servants? So if the board doesn't approve, it's like, <laughs> no, we do not approve. You are staying. You've got four more years. Yeah, my sister asked me that. Because I, I, I wasn't really saying a whole lot until uh, it was board approved. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, they can, they can say you can't retire. No, <laughs> no, no, you, you, you're over there. You, you can go. I don't know. No I know, soup I, for you. No soup for you. That might be a question for Jackie or uh, Damon. But I just know that, you know, it's not official. I, I did receive paperwork in the mail saying you were officially, you know, approved for resignation. So. Well, congratulations <laughs> on approving your resignation. That is tremendous. So it, you, teaching is now no longer part of the equation. You're not looking to go to another state, another school district. You're just not going to teach. Uh, teaching in the way I've been doing it for sure is, is off the table. I'm not going to, you know, go to Loudon and go teach art. I'm not going to anywhere else to teach art specifically. So, no, I'm. I'm interested in other things. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, mentoring. I'm looking at um, coaching, uh, working with younger teachers, or um, I'm not sure. I, I, when I first started my career at Shepherd, um, I was going into art therapy. And uh, then I did art education because my parents were like, you need to have a backup plan. <laughs> just Because that's what parents do. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you had to have a master's at that time to do art therapy. And, and 25 years ago, art therapy wasn't like approved by insurance and, you know, it was harder to find work. And so I did the education route. And then uh, when, it, when I finished, I decided to just go ahead and try teaching because I actually kind of liked it as I was going along. So I was trying to see where that would lead me. Um, and so now I guess I'm kind of sometimes pulling back towards that route of art therapy. I think maybe that could possibly be one of my future um, options. I'm just looking at what the route to that might be um, because licensing and things like that, I'm not going to go start another 60 hour master's program in counseling just to become an art therapist, you know, in three mm -hmm. years. So if there's other avenues for me to look at, um, honestly, I, I have 
lots of people who reach out to me all the time for things. They want murals, they want lessons, they want, you know, or I, things that I do in the classroom. The parents, the coworkers, the adults are like, I wish you would teach a class that I could come to. So I'm not sure that could be a possibility. You know, at some point, I don't, that's not going to replace my income full time. So I'm kind of looking at what might be, you know, my options, you know, part time and then work on that or, you know, something that might lead to that in the future. Since so. you're doing a career change now, have you thought of renouncing your Cincinnati Bengalism and switching <laughs> to Steelers? No. And actually, yesterday, my husband surprised me. I, I wore him just for you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great quarterback. <laughs> oh, he's my great. Husband, the my best, husband best quarterback in the league. Joe Burrow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody uh, at his job, I think, is, is making Joe Burrow earrings. And he's like, my wife has to have those. So he surprised me last night. So I was like, I'm going to bring those in for Rob today. <laughs> I'll get you some Kenny Pickett ones next time you're here. Matt Miller. You said best quarterback. I was thinking Baker Mayfield. Now that he's with Tampa, I have to hope that this is his, his resurgence. But uh, Patrick Mahomes may have something to say about that, too. Yeah. Uh, Julie, let, let me ask you, and you may have really already answered it, uh, but was this just the time? for you to step away from teaching or do you really feel like you kind of got pushed out by just all of the things that have been going on over the last three four five years um well i would say in 2019 i never expected this to happen right. so I, I thought i was you were going to have to take me out of the school in a wheelbarrow you mm -hmm. know i thought that i was going to be there forever um, so in three years, it was a drastic enough change that I've, desired, I've resigned. So um, I think that that's a surprise to me. I, I definitely didn't think that three years was going to be the end. Um, but I've given it three really long, hard years. Yeah. When you say the drastic change, can you walk us through some of that for those that, that aren't in a classroom on a regular basis? That, that what We understand, obviously, the challenge sometimes that it is in dealing with classes and class sizes and student population and coming from different facets of life and so forth, some more challenging, some not real school-oriented and so forth. But there are a lot of other things, I'm sure, involved as well. Well, I think um, in the last three years, we've had we've had a decline of staffing for sure um, that was slower and it really just hit full speed in three years. Uh, the loss of staffing. So you're constantly losing your time because there's not enough staff. Um, so that was definitely a factor is the amount of time that I don't have in the classroom to prepare for mm -hmm. the day. And I think that's where I'm really at is the amount of work that keeps getting piled on me at right. at home and i need more work-life balance and so i'm deciding that that's what i need to make a priority because the things that keep getting yeah. expected and more gets piled on your plate and you need to make sure that you're doing it on line for the parents and you're also doing it you know you have paper copies for this and that accommodations you know, everything there's just so many things that keep getting added to the teacher's plate and i feel like we've been talking about that since 2019. i feel like we've been saying we're we're adding too much on these teachers what can we take off their plate and i'm not sure what has been taken off our plate i haven't seen a single thing and in fact i feel like i spend more hours each year in the last three years at home doing work that's required for school and I'm done with that. I'm, I'm done. I'm looking for, I'm, I'm 110% kind of girl. So I'm going to give 110% um, for 26 years. That's what I've done. And um, I want my time valued. So when I'm job hunting and things like that right now, I'm like, you know, what, what are we looking at in terms of pay? And what I want to know is if I'm going to start out somewhere less pay than what I have right now, which is understandable because I might be training or learning things, um, do I get overtime? Because if I'm going to get overtime, then I'm going to make up that pay really fast because mm -hmm. I, I, I put in a lot of extra hours. I just want them to be counted for something. Well, let me ask as far as, as some of those hours and, and the work that maybe you had to take home with you, is that related to the classroom and just the busyness? Like you said, the lack of staffing puts you in situations where maybe you don't get that planning period and can't do those things. Or is a lot of that other work uh, more bureaucratic type work? You know, it just seems like uh, is there more and more coming from the top that demands that you have to do certain things, filling out paperwork for kids and and so forth I mean it's all of it it's, okay. there's um, more trainings there's mm -hmm. more paperwork there's more documentation um, there's more accommodation there's more um, 
there's less time in the room so in the classroom so i i'm grading more at home i'm you know doing the lesson plans at home and then on top of it when you're um a class like mine which is 3d you know i'm, I'm doing painting clay glass all these things that's a lot of prep work so if you give me zero time during the day then i have to do that at home or i have to come back to school or i mean i come i went to school you know probably every weekend unloading kilns and loading kilns and i did it because i love the kids and i love the products and that was the way that I needed to do it to keep things moving faster for the next week so that my week would go better um, when I came into the classroom. But when you're doing that and now you have more checklists to do or data to do or, you know, make sure you have your Schoology updated because parents, you know, want to have access to it. And it just, there's just more things that are on the end of the home side. And I'm, you know, I'm at a point where I want to value my family time because my boys are in high school now and um, I want to spend the last years that they might be staying at home I, wa I want to be able to focus more on on our family and, Johnny, the, ba and the balance Johnny B well I um, I mean knowing what teachers make in Berkeley County and and knowing you and your 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 vibrance your exuberation your talent and your training I think the odds of you making less in your next career are slim to none, and, and Slim just got up and you know walked out. Um, what I mean, what's your dream job? What coming out of teaching, and, and obviously, you and, and I've heard you many times. You, I mean, you are a passionate teacher. You love it, and the past four years have just been terrible, and it's gotten worse and worse to a point where so many teachers are leaving the profession. And I mean, we see all the numbers with colleges where so many. Teach, so many people are not going into the education field. What What is your dream job? I mean, what if, if you were to put together a job for yourself? What What do you envision? What What do you want to do? Well, I think that's what I'm. Um, that's what I'm in the process of doing right now is figuring that out because um, you know I knew that I was going to resign, um, and thank thankfully they allowed it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that that was coming um, because I tried some other opportunities in Berkeley County and those didn't work out for me. So um, I knew that the portal was, you know, looming in terms of when a da the date a teacher can transfer to another location or, you know, you can't. So um, once that came clear to me that I wasn't going to have another opportunity, then I just decided that this was the route. So I think I not really panicked in the beginning but I've just been like dabbling on job sites indeed things like that and applying to a lot of different things because I'm not sure I really I have worked so you would be surprised <laughs> I have worked in many different positions and most of my career I've had three three jobs at least um, until I had kids and then and then I kind of cut the side hustles out so that I could you know just focus on family and teaching um, so now I'm kind of like, what direction do I really want to go? Do I want to work on, you know, making more money for now, um, but maybe not enjoying what I do as much or having to commute further? You know, it's just weighing all those options out. So I'm taking some time to just pause and reflect and figure out where I do want to go the next direction before I, I, I jump on know something. What can the school system do? For the teachers who are still in the system to retain them, what can they do to make their lives easier? Well, I mean, that's part of the frustration, I think, because, you know, we've been talking about things like this for three to four years now. Um, I've been talking with legislators. I've talked with the board. I've gone to Citizens Forum. Um, I've talked to senior staff. You know, lots of times you hear, oh, we have a plan for that. We have, we have a plan for that. It's coming. Don't wait. I'm tired of waiting to see what you want to do to retain me. So if, if I've been working so hard with my peers to stay in Berkeley County and retain good staff here for Berkeley County, I've reached a point that now you don't, you don't want to retain me. You, you know, I'm so frustrated. How many times have I said this? You know, how many times have I explained that teachers are overwhelmed, we're drained, they're, the parents attack us um, in a lot of times, sometimes. Physically or verbally? Verbally, um, although this year I was also attacked by a student. Physically. Physically. Um, so there's just, and the kids, oh my goodness. I, I have loved working with middle school kids for decades now. But um, there's a point where right now what they care about more, and they've been so unaccountable, is just so hard to put up with. You know, 
if I can't teach clay safely because the kids just have no desire to do it, they just would rather like throw things or create chaos or, you know, maybe even videotape you, you know, you never know. You have to assume that somebody is trying to do those things. That's just so much stress. You know, I just want to like create a safe environment where we can be creative. We can use safe processes so students will learn when they go out in the real world and they have to use tools and materials. There are safety rules and you cannot just do what you want to do when you want to do it. Well, give me some recommendations for, for the teachers that are still in there fighting the battle, so to speak. <laughs> Tell me what the school system should be doing to help these people survive the day and the year and come back 20 years to 30 years. I mean, they really need to look at what they're requiring on a weekly basis of what has to be accomplished other than instruction. So the data, the paperwork, the documentation, the parent contacts, all those things that need to be done in a timely manner, but yet you're not giving me that planning time because I have to cover for someone else. So. What are you taking off my plate? You're saying now that that still has to be done, even though I gave up my time in the classroom to do this. Now I have to get it done on my own time. So that's, I mean, I think, how, how are they going to create a better work-life balance for your staff? That's what's burning many of them out, is the work-life balance. What's being piled on, piled on, piled on? They haven't taken any trainings away. I haven't seen any reduction in the amount of requirements for data collection and things like that. So if these are the things you're going to do and you're not going to give us time during the day to get them done, then is there more compensation? What, what are we talking about? That, that is my number one thing is the work-life balance, the amount of work that keeps getting piled on. And especially, I know last year with the ransom, it was, you know, it was a strange situation. But like really nothing was taken off my plate during that time mm -hmm. period. And I can teach art easily without technology. But there is grades that had to be done. There were, you know, other things that had to be done, reading IEPs, things like that. These are all things that have to be done online and we had to do them from our home. Are many of these things being added, do you know? Is it from the local side of things? Is it from, say, the State Board of Education? Does it come through legislation? Does some of it even come through the federal government and, and monies that come from the feds to help support schools and so forth? I mean, some of these regulations of added work, do you, do you know where it even comes from? In other words, at, at what level can it be corrected? <laughs> I know. It, it's it's yeah. actually kind of a mess. Um, but, I mean, it's all the above. Okay. I mean, if you're talking about things like special education, um, that is all going to be federal. Mm. I mean, you, you know, that, and so there were things that were added um, in the last few years through Berkeley County, um, I think partially because of um, the issues that Berkeley County had in special education. Um, but that means that everyone has to be more accountable. Um, so we're, you know, there's just ways to be documenting and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, I just teach art, but when you teach every single student in a building, then that means you're accommodating for every single student in a building. Mm -hmm. And you have to read all that paperwork, sign off on all that paperwork, do all that paperwork. So um, these are the things that, it's just a shame, I feel like, that it's come to this point. But um, I do need to take care of myself. Like, I think at some point you have to, I have to recognize the trauma over the last three years, uh, personally and professionally, and that it's taken a toll on me and that I can't keep operating at this level um, because it's going to have re repercussions in my health or in my family or something like that. So I don't have hope at this point that it would get better for me if I stayed another year. So that's why I finally made the decision. I need to do what's best for me and for my family because I can't continue at this pace. Not recognizing that trauma, what would happen is I would have a bad day and I might do something. I might snap, you know, I might say something, I might react in a way that I just can't handle at that moment because I'm, I'm constantly dealing with that kind of stress and pressure and, and the trauma that I've been through. So. I know that I need to just take a break, walk away, and try something else, and see what's next. Let me ask a quick question. 
the um, all the work you guys have to do at home. I know with I know the state sets most of the teacher pay, and there's some extra things. Has there ever been a a legislator? Has the legislature ever looked at overtime pay for teachers? where there could be some kind of mechanism where when they're overburdening you during the day, when you have to go home and do three hours at night, I mean, anywhere else in the world, it's illegal to make people work without pay unless they're in certain management positions. Has that ever been talked about, overtime pay for teachers? I mean, through, um, I think, COVID funds, there have been some opportunities for pay, but it's been like things that were after school, like, enrichment activities for kids or tutoring and support services. I mean, that money has to go towards the students and supports. So if you're doing something that's like overtime-ish and it was in that category, then yes, we, we earned some extra pay in the last couple of years, but um, that doesn't account for the things that are supposed to be part of your regular job. I'm just surprised no one is sued about that because I mean, you see, you hear of companies getting sued all the time for expecting their employees to do more work than could be done in a day and then you got people taking work home to fulfill their responsibilities that um i mean that that would be a good question for for one of our school board members is why is there not a mechanism for overtime if teachers are expected to perform that duty i think there'll be more state level because that's who sets the pay mm -hmm. not the counties you know, if everything goes through Charleston and West Virginia, buddy. All roads lead to Rome. <laughs> right. Yes, we should ask a delegate that. Uh, Julie, yes. uh, first off, I, I sympathize and empathize with you because as a uh, paid coach, I have to do all the courses at the beginning of the school year, almost all the ones the teachers have to do. And this year, the number of those courses jumped from four to ten. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are repetitive. Right. Some of them are so stupidly commonsensical, like don't pick up glass with your bare hands. Yes. Um, that takes, that's a 20-minute test right there. Well, let, me, yeah. let me get that. Let me take notes on that. No picking glass. Bare, got it. Yeah, there's, there's a 20-minute test right there online. Another, another one is uh, for bloodboard pathogens, which, right. which issue one is you're not qualified to clean them up. Call a janitor. And then we go on for 20 more minutes about bloodborne pathogens and why I shouldn't clean them up. That's a one-question quiz. Right well, there, but it's 20 minutes long. And there's 10 of these, <laughs> and, and some of them are half an hour, and they, they repeat. There used to be four. Last year there were four. Now there's 10. And then I, I could go on. The, the, right. the require, CPR used to be after you got your first cert, it was about a half an hour to a 45-minute research. Now it's a four-hour, two hours online, two hours in person. They make these things more complex mm -hmm. every year. They don't take anything away, and then they add another layer the next year. Yeah. And the next thing you know... You're sitting around spending six, eight, nine, ten hours before you even get to teach or coach somebody. Right. Just sitting around. And that doesn't count all the football stuff that you gotta research with every every year, every two years, and every three years, whatever it is. It they lump it on. And yeah. and I'm I'm at the point now where once this jump from four to ten where I'm thinking, I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna coach. So right. I, I understand what you're going through. Because I mean, the I'm, bureaucratic BS is piling up. Let's let's just let's just give a round of applause for Julie, who does not have to do bloodborne pathogens for the <laughs> first time in 26 years. <laughs> hey, and you brought in some caprese salad. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good to see you Good again. To see you. Best of luck to you in your future enterprise. Thank you. I'll let you know what happens. <laughs>